Hi, I'm Stan Lyle, and you're at Master Math's lesson on the coordinate plane. During the lesson, you'll see some You Try It pages. When you get to one of these, hit your pause button. With pencil and paper, try to solve the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the solution. The coordinate plane, what, what in the world is that? Is it the opposite of an uncoordinated plane? Well, no, I, I don't think so. But an airplane needs to know where it is. It has a map and some navigation equipment to show it where it is um, relative to cities and mountains and its destination and where it's coming from. And a coordinate plane is an awful lot like a map. Well, you remember a number line. A number line is uh, just a line where we can plot points, positive and negative, and find out where they are relative to zero. For instance, if we had a point minus 2, we could plot where that is. It would be right there, two numbers to the left of 0. On the number line, the numbers to the right of 0 are positive, and they're getting bigger as they go further, further to the right. The numbers to the left of 0 are negative, and they get smaller as we go further to the left. But we could turn this axis 90 degrees and get it to run from top to bottom. In this case, the zeros in the middle, the numbers above the zero are positive, and they're getting larger as we get further from zero. The numbers to the bottom of zero are negative, and they're getting smaller as we get further from zero. We could plot a number on this. Let's say y equals minus 2. That would be right at the the number minus 2 spot on the number line. And again, by convention, we call this axis the y-axis. The y-axis runs from the top to the bottom. Okay, now if we were to combine that x-axis that ran left to right and that y-axis that ran from the top to the bottom, if we just pushed them together, we'd have a coordinate plane. And on this coordinate plane, we could plot x values. If x were 3, it would be right there. And we could combine, we could also uh, plot y values. If y were 4, it would be right there, 4 positive. But what if we had an x and a y value? Well, it would be x is 3 and y is 4. It would be where those two cross. It would be right there there. By convention, if I've got an x value and a y value that I want to plot, I list it in this fashion. I put the x value first, I put a comma in, and then I put the y value. For instance, if I had a, uh, an, a situation where x equaled minus 2 and y equaled minus 2, I could plot that. And I've done that with that red uh, square that's on the coordinate plane. It's a value minus 2, minus 2. How did I know that? Well, I do the x first, and I go 1, 2, minus 2. And then I do the y value, which is also uh, minus 2. So I'm going down the y axis, two points. I go 1, 2, and my point's right there. Now, by convention, we call the four quarters of the coordinate plane quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. This quadrant right here is quadrant 1. This is quadrant 2, 3, and 4. And each of those quadrants has certain characteristics. You'll notice in quadrant 1 that the x values are all positive. So if I've got a positive x, it's going to be to the left of the y-axis. It's going to be in that area uh, up here. And you'll also notice that in this quadrant, my y values are positive. So in quadrant 1, both my x's are positive and my y's are positive. In quadrant 2, my y's are positive, but my x's are negative. In quadrant 3, where our sample point was, we have negative x's and negative y's. And in quadrant 4, I've got positive x's and negative y's. Well, we just plotted some points on a coordinate plane. Could we also plot a line? Well, sure we could. We could draw a line on the coordinate plane, and that line you'd ha would have an infinite number of points on it. 
For instance, I've drawn a line here, and it starts at positive 2, positive 2, 2, 2. X is 2, Y is 2. And I've got another point right here, and it's an X of minus 1 and a Y of minus 1. So it's minus 1, minus 1. And I've drawn a line between those two points, and every, po every point that you could draw on that line would have coordinates. For instance, I've got a green point there. What are the coordinates of that point? Think about it. I'll give you a second, and then we'll talk about it. Well, that was two seconds. I hope that was enough. That green point, let's get the x value first. It's one positive x. Now let's get the y value. It's one positive y. So the green point is at 1, 1. Okay, well now you're probably asking yourself, what in the world value does any of this have? Why would I want to plot a point or plot a line on a coordinate plane or a graph? Well, let me give you a practical example. We know that as we go higher above sea level, the temperature drops. We also know that as we go lower below sea level, the temperature drops. If we're in a submarine a thousand feet below sea level, it's going to be colder, the water will be colder than it was up at sea level. And if we're in an airplane a thousand feet above the, the uh, ground, the temperature is going to be colder than it was at the ground. So let's plot some points and see if uh, we gain any information or if this is valuable. Let's say we get an airplane and we go a thousand feet up into the air and we measure the air temperature and we compare it to the air temperature back at sea level and we discover it was one degree cooler. Now that point is at sea level so the temperature is going to be the temperature at sea level but then let's say we get in a submarine and we go a thousand feet below sea level and then we measure the temperature of the water and we discover that it's also one degree cooler than the temperature of the water at sea level. So we've got three points. We've got a point here which is uh, a thousand feet below sea level and the temperature dropped by uh, one degree and then we've got a point at sea level where the temperature was the temperature at sea level so there's no change in elevation or in, in, uh, in temperature so it's zero zero. And we've got another point where a thousand feet in the air and the temperatures also dropped a degree. Well, we could connect these points with a line. And that line would tell us something. It would be helpful. For instance, let's say we got 200 feet above sea level. Or no, that's 400 feet above sea level right there. How much would we expect the temperature to change? Well, we go down until we came to that uh, line there and we discover we would expect the temperature to have dropped by two tenths of one degree. It's one that's one fifth of the way down. So it's 20 percent of a, a drop of one degree. So hopefully you can see why that graph might be helpful to somebody and there's lots of examples of how graphs can really help us understand things in business and science in well, now you try it. What are the coordinates of the point K? Hit your pause button, do the problem, hit your forward button, and you'll see the answer. The point K is at 2, 3. It's at X2. 1, 2, and it's at y positive 3, 1, 2, 3. So it's 2, 3. It's in quadrant number 1, so both x and y are going to be positive. How about this one? What are the coordinates of point B? Hit the pause button, and when you're done, hit the forward button. Okay, what are the coordinates of point B? Well, first let's figure out where we are on the x-axis. We're 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers to the left of 0 on the x-axis. 
And then where are we on the y-axis? We are one, two, three, four, five numbers to the left or above zero. So we're negative four, one, two, three, four, positive five, one, two, three, four, five. X first, Y second. In this one, I want both the coordinates and what quadrant the point's in. Hit your pause button, do the problem, hit the forward button. All right, point A. Well, let's first figure out where it, where it is relative to the x-axis. We have to go to the left of 0 on the x-axis to find it, and we have to go 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers to the left of the x-axis. So the x value is going to be minus 4. Now where is the y value? We have to go south of or below the, the x-axis, down the y-axis, and we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the y value is minus uh, 5, the x value is minus 4, the point is going to be minus 4, minus 5. And it's in the third quadrant. This is the first quadrant, this is the second quadrant, this is the third quadrant, this is the fourth quadrant. And in the third quadrant, both the x values and the y values are negative. Try this one. Well, here we've got a line on a coordinate plane, and we've got two points on that line, A and B. What are the coordinates of those points? Well, let's do A first. A, and we're going to get the x value first. We go 1, 2, a positive 2 is the x value. And then we go y, it's also positive, we're going up, 1, 2, 3. So the A coordinates are 2, 3, and it's in quadrant 1. What's B? Well, let's go on the x-axis first. We go 1, 2, 3, negative. So it's negative 3. And then the y value, it's 2 down, so it's negative 2. So B is at point minus 2, excuse me, minus 3, minus 2, and it's in quadrant 3. A point is in quadrant 2 of the coordinate plane. Is x positive or negative? Is y positive or negative? Hit your pause button, figure it out, hit your forward button. Well, a point's in quadrant 2. Which quadrant is that? Quadrant 2 is over here, and you'll notice that the x values are negative and the y values are positive. So. In quadrant 2, the x values are negative, the y values are positive. Well, I hope you know a lot more about the coordinate plane now, and I hope it makes a little bit of sense to you. Now let's test your skills. Go to www.mastermath.info, find the worksheets tab under 7th grade, first quarter, find the worksheet titled The Coordinate Plane, download it print it, do it, and make sure you understand the concepts we discussed today. There also is an interactive quiz on the, the uh, www.mastermath.info that you can try and test the same skills. Come back again real soon to Master Math.